Do you want to know how to talk to your adult child about moving out? I'm Nicolene Peck. I've raised a lot of children to adulthood, and I teach all over the world about parenting, good communication, how to build strong family bonds through the lens of the principle self-government. And in this video, we're talking about adult children moving out. I've had a lot of children move out now. For years I did therapeutic treatment care for troubled teens. Many of them got to be age 18 and so they aged out of being able to stay at my house at least as far as the system was concerned and so we had to help them move off on their own and start their life all by themselves. Also I had my own children, I have four children of my own who have since moved out. Now some people would probably look at my children and say, yeah Nicolene, how can you really talk about the answer to this question because none of your children ever had a problem moving out. They all hit the age of adulthood and said, okay, I'm going to school, I'm going to go serve a mission for our church, I'm going to get this job, I'm going to go do these things. And they all just moved out and started their adult lives. They looked forward to it and they did it. And that's because we prepared them ahead of time to do this. Now what I'd like to talk about in this video is how to prepare somebody ahead of time to get ready to move out. We're talking years ahead, months ahead, okay? And then what to do if you have a child that really does need to move out, like you know they need to move out. You need to have a conversation with them about that. And they're already adults, well, technically, but they're not living adult lives. And what to do about that. So let's see what we can cover. If you have already subscribed to this channel, then you know I love the principle of pre-teaching talking about what you're going to talk about before you talk about it. That's meta communication. It is the highest level of communication. And when we do it in our groups of people, like at the office or in our families or in our church communities or, you know, any of the groups that we associate with, we're more productive. We solve our problems better. So meta communication, there is power there. So what I would do is I would start pre-teaching my children when they're younger. I mean, when they're like, you know, maybe 12, 13, 14, you start talking about them growing up, what that's going to look like and how they're going to, you know, be moving out on their own. Now, some parents get a little aggressive. I'm going to call it aggressive and they say things for their ch to their children for shock value. They say, well, as soon as you're 18, you're going to be out of here. My husband even said that a couple of times and I looked at him and I was like, no, you know, that's not going to happen. And he just smiled at me like, aha, I'm just being silly. But those types of things are sometimes taken seriously by the children. Maybe the parent wants them to take it seriously. Maybe the parent wants them to, to think, okay, mom and dad are not planning on providing for me for the rest of my life, so I gotta do something, because at some point they'll kick me out. If they're saying that now, I'm gonna get kicked out at some point. So maybe that's why they say things like that. I think it's a little aggressive. I think it's probably a little bit manipulative, especially if you wouldn't really do it, okay? And why would you say that and do that? Because because they have some steps they have to cover before they're ready for that adult life, right? So my children did all pretty much leave the home at 18. So that did happen. I mean, give or take. It wasn't like their birthday turned and then they, they left the home or something like that. They just were ready at that time to start their adult lives. They had already been working jobs. They had already been serving in their community, doing adult things in their lives. Most of my children well, my biological children all started university studies when they were 16, so they'd already been going to university, that kind of stuff. So for them, it was like, I'm already doing a lot of adult things. I'm taking a lot of responsibility anyway for myself. So it wasn't a big stretch because we wanted them to mature. We didn't want to keep them babies. So this brings me to a key principle and that is don't baby and coddle your children. Not ever, not when they're little and not when they're older. Don't do everything for them. Make them stretch, make them want it, make them fail, make them do the things that they need to do so that they can go out there and fail again and feel like it's okay, I'll try again. Because if they don't know how to fail, they'll never try again. They won't actually mature. They have to know that failing is okay and that's part of life. And they have to have been given the opportunity under your roof where they wouldn't lose a place to live or food to eat when they failed at the time. 
it's important. So start talking to them about it. Say, okay, you know, at this stage, when you hit this age, then, you know, you're going to definitely need to have a job by then. So be thinking about how you can earn money. Let's start earning money now and learning how to manage our money. Definitely save your money. You're going to want to have money saved. So you've got a car and stuff. So you don't have to like take the bus or, you know, always be walking, but you can get around a little bit better. You're going to want to get good grades and stuff so that you can get into college if that's what you want to do. I am one of those people that even though all of my children have gone to college and, um, you know, they've done well there, graduated and everything else. I only have one that's not graduated yet, but he's only 20, so he's still got some time to go. But I did not think that they had to do college though. They don't have to. There are some people that are very, very successful at what they do. They lead the rest of the world and they never finished their college. So if they taste it, dabble in it and don't finish, I don't care. As long as they see themselves going forward with purpose, that's what matters. So don't, I don't put those types of pressures on my children because those are huge financial pressures too. And I want them to feel like, okay, well, I can afford it here. Well, I can't afford it. Well, how bad do I really need that? Do I? Or I've got this job over here that's paying me really well. I can move up here. I'm learning things here. This degree in communications, is it really going to serve me? Like, is it? If not, why do I need it? If they pull away from that and make a decision like that, I probably would applaud them because I would say, good for you. You prioritized, you picked what you needed, and you can always go back to that if you want to. You can. There is no rule that there's an age for college or university studies. So there you go. I would talk to them about these things and how to prepare and how to set up their finances and all that kind of stuff. Of course, we're going to prepare them for how to do good on technology and all of that before, you know, they just all of a sudden have a phone and everything at 18 and, you know, okay, well, let's prepare you for how to self-govern on some of those things as we're leading up to launching from the home. So all of that kind of stuff is done ahead of time. If you want to get your child prepared to launch, you give them opportunities opportunities. You give them freedom. You don't micromanage them. You don't make them tell you every single thing all the time and you let them launch a little bit. Okay. I mean, obviously within reason, there are some things you got to warn the children about, but you know what I'm talking about. So now what about that child that's sitting on the couch playing their computer games or whatever, their online gaming and they don't want to ever leave. They're like, this is great. I got a sweet deal. Mom takes me everywhere. She gives me any food I want. She buys me my treats. I'm sitting on the couch playing with my friends all day. It's great. I'll just like be Peter Pan, right? And never grow up. This is a problem that we're having in our society today. Um, a lot of people, young people are even like touting it as like the greatest success. I don't have to get a job. I don't have to take any responsibility. So that's not a great thing. So what you need to do is figure out how to give your child the responsibility. Don't buy all the snacks. Don't buy all the things. Don't take them to all the places. Don't. They've got to have the responsibility. It's got to hurt for a person to take the steps forward, it's got to hurt a little bit. That's part of maturing, that's part of growing up. It's hard to see, but it's absolutely true that they have to have a little bit of those growing pains. So what I would do is I would also let them know, hey, so long as you're under my roof, you have to be treated like a child, okay? because I'm technically paying your way in life. So you're technically not being an adult. Age means nothing. Sure, you can vote, that's great. If you wanna vote, go ahead. You know, you can buy your own car insurance or whatever, great. You can do that, those types of things. But really, unless you can pay for all the things in your life and you can do all the things in your life, then you really just have to do whatever we say to do here. And I know that's not the fun way for you, but that's just how it goes because this is our house and we're in charge of it. We are the adults here. And so we're the ones that get to choose because we're the ones paying for all of it. So I'm very sorry. So you will have to do all of your own responsibilities and contribute to what's going on around here for us to then go, oh, you are an adult living here. Oh, okay. Then we'll start treating you differently. But we need to see that. And so let's start talking about what we can do to take some steps to help you toward that. Now, if the child will not take the steps or if they set them and then they don't do anything about it and they, you know, just appease you by talking to you and, oh, mom, I love you so much and you're so great. Sure, I'll take steps, but I then don't take any steps. There might come a point where you have to say, you know, we really just care about you so much that we're going to set an end date for you so that you know when you need to be off on your own and experiencing life. 
So let's make a plan for it. Let's make it happen. But then there will come a point where we'll have to just like move you out. And if you want to put a tent on the front yard, I guess you can, you know, but there's a point where you got to go. And either they stay and act like an adult until they get a few other things under their belt, which I'm okay with, or they go and act like an adult. But either way, they have to take on the responsibilities of adulthood. That's really what we're talking about when we want them to leave the house, right? Is we want them to be an adult. And if you need your space, it's also okay to tell a person that you're, you know, giving free rent to that, um, it's, you know what, I think I need my space now and, and I'm going to need you to go and I think it's going to be the best thing for you. They could be mad for a bit, but don't take it personal. So you might have to just instruct them to do that. We love our children all the way up. Honestly, parenting adult children is actually harder than parenting the children when they're little. I know when they're little we think, oh great, when they're adults it's gonna be so great. <laughs> but it's actually sometimes harder because we can't control it all. All we can do is pray and nudge and try to guide and direct. And, and it's rough because they make a lot of mistakes that sometimes we shake our heads at and we wish they wouldn't do and they learn things the hard way. But guess what? That's also part of being an adult. And sometimes that's just how it's gonna be. And we have to trust that we did everything we could to teach them and then let them learn a few of those things the hard knocks way if they have to. It's okay. That's still good parenting. So there's a lot more about self-government that could really benefit your adult child probably. There is a whole training that I did on my website, teachingselfgovernment.com, that's called Dare to Take Command. And it's about personal self-government for adults. And it could be something that could be very beneficial to your adult child. Maybe the two of you watch that, discuss that together. It's like a three hour training. And see if you can, after that, make some plans for taking some steps forward.